It's me, Orne. I'm back. So this is, I suppose, a bit late, not that late. But yeah, it's the first whole week of, isn't it? The first, yeah, first whole week of the year. First whole week, week of January. So this is my December wrap up, as you already know from the title. Uh, I'm just gonna note a few things. I had planned to talk about some of these books in a vlog. Now I'm not thinking like, I kind of think I'm gonna just leave the, the left. The, the, uh, I think I'll just drop that vlog because I have thought like doing several books in that vlog and I'm like, I don't want to do it. I see people on booktube do vlogs now and then and I don't know, I suppose like if you do a vlog like centered around like 24 hour readathon or like just a day or a weekend, fine, but like if you do it around like a theme and you kind of do it over time, you have to have patience, which I don't always have. And uh, yeah, I don't always really do that, so so I'm just gonna drop that. So instead of doing it in a vlog, I'm gonna tell you about it here. So yeah, so that's kind of I suppose in a way why I haven't really talked about some of them. Well, they were from last month, but yeah. Uh, also, is there anything else to say at the start here? I don't think so. No. Okay, let's. Okay, sorry, I'm just gonna find that one and then let's. Sorry. And then let's start. First, we have Skyward by Henderson, Garbage, Fabella, and Bowland. Well, one that is probably. Yeah, so the writer is Joe Henderson, the art is Lee Garbage, uh, art and cover, colorist Antonio Fabella. A letterer, Simon Ballard. Interesting, huh? So many people work in comics. Because I usually don't really read that many comics, so for like, oh, so many, so many offers, and then it's one offer and lots of people like collaborating. Like, hmm, comics. It's kind of a huge collaborating product, really. really. But yeah, this one. <laughs> I bought it uh, December 2019. <laughs> Didn't read it before tw December 2020. So, yeah, that happened. Uh, it is, as you see, it's a comic, it's a volume one, so it's it's just one volume, it's just one volume, so it's, it's not like a huge long read, and I kind of like wanted like something short and fun, uh, one day in December, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna read you, and yeah, so this book, uh, comic, can you say book when it's comic? It's a comic book, so I suppose it's not wrong. Please tell me if what's the correct term here is. Uh, but yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is set in a world where the gravity has actually kind of gone. So a lot of people now uh, live in the sky. Well, some people live uh, on the ground. They have to have like special shoes. And then kind of this is whole like society around that. And uh, of course, there's corruption stuff. And uh, yeah, it's. Quite interesting. I very much enjoyed it. Uh, there's diversity in that the main character is African American. Her love interest is, I was about to say in the Witch uh, her love interest is, oh my god, I can't, sorry, I can't words. Um, her love interest is wheelbound. That's not what I was meant to say, but okay, her love interest uh, has. What is the word? Yeah, anyway, his feet doesn't work. I suppose in this society, it does work because no one uses gravity. But yeah, I mean, so there's that. And uh, there's a character in here that's fat. So there's, yeah, quite a lot of good diversity in it. And yeah, it's just a very interesting, fun story. Um, it's not like a, as I said, it's not a big story. Uh, was because I know they don't really read comic books. It's kind of like strange to me to like finish the book in like. No, it doesn't really. It doesn't say the pages, but I think like I don't really think it's longer than like seventy pages. So yeah, it's pretty quick read, really. So that's kind of just different for me. But it it is like a full story in that in this seventy pages. 
So yeah, I yeah, I would say I would recommend it. Definitely a good read. Then we have a book that's um kind of was mean in a way because it's a Norwegian book. Hey, if this is your first video by me, I'm Norwegian doing videos in English. But I do talk about it sometimes the books that I talk about the books I read also the Norwegian on her. I have done one, two at least one actually review in Norwegian because like the book was in Norwegian so I felt like kind of fun fine fits uh, fits most like why would I do book review a book that's in in Norwegian uh, by Norwegian and it's not out in English that would kind of be weird I was thinking really uh, this is this is a wrap up I'm going to talk about a Norwegian book and it is Exnakar om det hele tiden by Tamara Lundestad Jof so yes, see, it's not a huge book, but yeah, it's non-fiction. What would you call it? I would say non-fiction essay. Yeah, because it's not poems, but it's not like it's not speeches. I'm gonna call it essays. I like non-fiction short texts. I'm not really sure what it's called it really because some of the okay, so most of the texts are kind of like so they're. Uh, they're like autobiographical, autobiographical. She's she's talking about her life, like things she's experienced. The author, uh, but it's not like it's very short. Too. It's not about her whole life, and it's often like they. I would say like it's very snapshotty. Like it's about that day, and then that day in five years earlier, and like that. But yeah, um, it might not like like what's okay. So what is she talking about? Well, okay, sorry. So this, um, <clears throat> sorry, this author, she's, uh, God, I should know this. She's half Norwegian, half Gambian. Her dad is from Gambia. And now I'm blanking out. Is the word from Gambia in English Gambia? I'm going to have to check it out. Sorry. Thank you. Anyway, okay. So her dad is from a country in Africa. So she's uh, half white, half black. Is that a bad way of saying it? I hope that's not okay. Anyway, she's she is black, but yeah, I hope I didn't say anything wrong in there. But yeah, so this is a story about race in Norway and racism. Often people have an idea that like racism that's not something that happens in Norway because we're so nice and. And and it was nice and welcoming and nothing bad happens in Norway. Well, um, we did have actually a racist murder in like 2001 of Benjamin. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know his last name. But yeah, of uh, Benjamin, he was like a teen. He was murdered in Norway because of his race, race of him being black. So, yeah. We also have, uh, there was also an incident in, I think, like 2005, four maybe, where in Trondheim in Norway, there was an uh, African uh, Norwegian. He was, I think, it was just like in, in a park in the summer, just enjoying the sun. And then, uh, now I'm forgetting all the whole thing. I think, I think like he got heat stroke or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure like he had to like uh he had to call the ambulance. And then the ambulance when they came and then the ambulance like before it so like before it came all the way like they had to park somewhere so they had to like walk from the park to like where it is. And then they talked to like him on the phone and they said like yeah I'm over here like oh we have that guy and then they started walking slower. So of course he got uh he got help later than he should have. So, and I'm again, sorry, I'm not quite sure if that's completely right, but it's something around the ambulance people who didn't treat an African Amer African Norwegian right in Trondheim. I do remember that. Sorry. I'm going to link the real stuff down below. Uh, hopefully I'll find an English article it. But yeah, so we do have racism in Norway. Also, in, in 2011, when our bebe, Anders Bering Beirik, he killed lots of uh, immigrants or 
a lot of youths in Norway of different ethnicities because they were ethnic Norwegians because he's Nas. So yeah, uh, we do have like those big examples, but we will do also like like she says here, she has meet <clears throat> she meets lots of racism in her day to day life in Norway, but also like she talks about incidents in Sweden in Denmark. So yeah, even though yeah Norwegians, the police doesn't have don't have guns, so there aren't really that many African Americans who are killed. Like sorry, Norwegian Americans, <laughs> Norwegian Americans, Norwegian Africans who are killed in Norway, but they don't have it perfect either. So yeah, so this is kind of like um, I felt it was kind of good to read this to like read about about how it is to be. African Norwegian and have to be black how it is to be how it is to be a black person in Norway because yeah it's not it's something we've talked about a lot about Norway also like this last few months it's not, it's not actually came out in 2016 so it's not like it didn't come out last year but yeah because of last year I felt like I should I want to read something Norwegian based around Black Lives Matter and based around that stuff because I know it must be some books of them. There's actually just like two or three books on the subject, but yeah, this book it's powerful, not long, but packs a punch. And I'm talking a lot about this book now, but yeah, it's just a great, great book. Sadly, as I said, it's in Norwegian, I'm pretty sure it's not translated. I suppose it might be, maybe, maybe you could audience this, or maybe. American audiences want to read about Norwegian, uh, African Norwegians, so maybe, maybe it will get credited, but I don't think it exists at this moment in time in English. I'm sorry, but yeah, uh, great, great read. Then we have the Dark Archive, something completely different, by Genevieve Cogman. This is the seventh book. And also, I actually checked the offer. <laughs> it's a penultimate book in the series. And in case you do not, penultimate means the next last. So, the last book, next book in the series will be the last. It is actually coming out this year, but yeah. So, this book, wow, wow. It has some big revelations, quite an interesting villain in it. I won't say anything much. Be well, I suppose the villain you see him quite. Okay, I already tell you him. Sorry. Look, okay, you you get to know him quite quick in the book. Um, no, I still not gonna say who it is because it's fun for you to enjoy it for yourself. And uh, it's also like quite fun because this series usually it takes place in like different alternative uh, past. Like there's um, uh, eighteen hundred. Like usually they they like they are based in eighteen hundred England England version but they might go to like a 1600 italy mm, version of parallel universe okay so this whole world is like parallel universes and uh, but this one actually takes place mostly in like the future where like they have computers and stuff so it's kind of actually more technological based and that's kind of quite interesting really to see like see these characters in that environment so because they're used to meeting new stuff it's not bad for them it's not like fish out of water directly, but it's just kind of fun to like be a reader and read these characters in a modern-ish world. And uh, yeah, it's it's very, very good. Uh, and yeah, also a new character is actually introduced in this book, Caroline. Now I'm suddenly blanking out, I think. Her name is Carol. Sorry, Catherine. Her name is Catherine. Yeah, I'm not going to say much, but I'm just going to say Catherine is a great character. I, yeah, I very much enjoy her. Very much enjoy her. Yeah, if you haven't read the series yet, now's a great time because you have lots of books to catch up. There's, this is the 7th book, the uh, 8th book is coming out this year. So you can just enjoy all the rest books and then read the last book when it comes out. And uh, yeah. So that's that. Oh yeah, also this is also my list of most uh, funnest books I read last year because yeah, it was quite quite fun. As was as was maybe it's actually more like 
four or five scenes, it was just hilarious. Uh, for most part, it was more like intense and fast paced in action, but the scenes were the which were like comedy filled were just so so hilarious, so hilarious. It's just yeah, yeah, check it out. Definitely. It's just you need you need to read it, everyone. Everyone needs to read it. And then we have Arusha, The Tree of Wishes. This is the third book in the series. <laughs> kind of fun, Arusha and the Tree. It's the third book. Ha ha ha. Sorry, that's a bad joke. But um, sometimes you kind of have to have bad jokes. Uh, but yeah, uh, this book is also very, very good. I did, I think I did want to say, no, I didn't say I'm feeling a lot of different stuff today, but... I talked about this one in another video, but yeah, this series is so so good. One of my favorites. It's middle grade, but it's not like middle grade where it's like filled with boss jokes. No, it's middle grade in a good way where like you believe the characters are 12, 13, 14, and this one are 14, but I mean, it's still middle grade, I would say. Um, and they still, yeah, it's so it's like they're around that age, but it's done in a good way. It's not like Alienating, alienating, alienating. If you're older than fourteen, fifteen, you can be eight and love this series. And yes, uh, just a very fun way to like to read read about Indian Indian myths and Indian gods. And uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't really think I'm gonna say that much about more about this one since it's the third in the series. Except that it's one chapter in it. It's just like whoa, whoa mind-blowing, mind-blowing, and it's just, yeah, an amazing chapter. Um, it has a big cliffhanger, and I'm gonna end with it, talking about it there. A little tease. And we have Tough Set Sail, the last book in the series by Robin Stevens. So this is the last book in the A Murder Most Unlikely series, or I suppose if you're from the Arsene Sea, from the States, it's called Wells and Wong. I suppose it's it's about Wells and Wong, so I suppose maybe it's shorter of that series name, but what have you? You, if you'd like to see, I mean, this series, you kind of recognize it, it's the series. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a series. I would say I'm not like quite sure if it's middle grade or YA. Because the first book starts with them being like 12 or 11, I think. And then the last one, this one, ends with them being 15. But like, so, I don't know. And like some people, some people say like, why your books have to have like romance in them. This series has romance in some of the books, but not all of the books. And it's often plot B or plot C. It's not often like the focus on the story. How do you define, how do you... Define like age gendered or which, which, sorry, which age target it is. I'm not sure. Okay, but anyway, this is like, okay, so this is uh, it's a mystery set in the past, uh, mystery, mystery series where these teens they solve mysteries, well, they solve crimes, murders. It's a murder most only like, so in every book, there's a murder. You can very much guess, uh, very much guess the Agatha, Agatha Christie um, vibes from it actually, because there's often uh, a locked room uh, mysteries, or there's mysteries where the first book has a mystery where first they find the body and then they go tell people, okay, there's a body, there's a body, and then they go back to the body and the body is missing. So there's all this quite really fun, really, uh, yeah really fun mysteries. In one uh, in one book there's they are at trains, so like kinda of like a murder on Road Express uh, alluding to it. And yeah, it's just amazing series. Also, it has LGBTQ aspects in there. Um some people say like they didn't want to know because like that's spoiling. I wouldn't really say it's spoiling. And like since also like since uh, love aspects is not huge in the series, I wouldn't really say spoiling to like say that it's in there because but yeah it's in there so just know that i wouldn't say who it is but i'll say it has an aspect in the series i'll say that 
And yeah, this is the last book in the series. Um, I feel like from the beginning, like you kind of think something's gonna happen because something is alluded to. Like all of these books are like told in, let's say, reverse. They're told in past tense. So, like the they told like in like after this, everything has happened, they like say like. I remember that day back in June when it all happened, when it all started. It's like, it's old. What is it thinking about? In past tense, it's old. Looking back, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, mm, so this one kind of hints at something huge happening. Since it wasn't really like the key on that, I kind of spoiled myself. I felt like, that can't happen. I can't, can't happen. So, like, very quickly, I went to back and look and, like, checked, like, Okay, yeah, so I'm thinking that is somehow not true. So I, uh, so I kind of knew like something was kind of not going the way it was kind of alluding to. But still, like when it went that way and like when it seemed to like be that way, I was like, <gasps> and I did cry. So yeah, even I was spoiled. Like even if I, even when I, even after spoiling myself, I still was very much, um, Affected by this book. So yeah, that says a lot a lot by this author Robin Stevens great great writing and uh, Yeah, I did cry a bit Because of the book and also because like it's the last in the series quite quite sad but There is actually coming out a Short story collection this year 2021 once upon a crime. I'll link it down below and in 2022 there's a sequel, sorry, there's a spin-off series coming! So, yeah, that's amazing. The spin-off series, um, yeah, I'm just gonna say, a spin-off series is set during the Second World War with spies. I suppose it might merge as well, but the sec second series is based around spies. So that's quite, quite cool. So yeah, excitement, excitement! But yeah, uh, if you haven't checked out this series, Definitely, definitely do. You have to check it out. You have to. If you haven't, it's like, why haven't you? Yeah. Then we have... <clears throat> then we have the Cheese Dragon Society. And this one, actually, I think, maybe like the... I think I read it like the 3rd of December. Like the 30th uh, words. Next to the last day of December, maybe the last day of December, anyway, like the end of December. I kind of wanted something, yeah, I kind of like, felt like, I want something quick and fun. I think it was a day I was kind of tired, but I kind of wanted to read something. So I picked it up. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and yeah, it's, it's quite a charming story. It's, as you see, it's not a huge story, really. It's... Uh, it's like 60 pages, 60 pages, so it's not long at all, really. And I would say, like, the, the art is beautiful, beautiful. The story is maybe, it's not thin, but I suppose it's kind of like, it feels a bit prequel-ish, because not that much happens in it. Uh, it's still very enjoyable, I'm gonna finish the series, but like, this is very charming and nice. But yeah, not very much happened in it, but I still very much enjoyed it. So I suppose this is like me complaining. I'm not complaining, I'm just kind of warning you. Don't expect this book to be packed with with action, because it's not. But it's a delightful read, if you need something deli delightful. And uh, yeah. It has, uh, I'm just going to say, it has both uh, ethnic ethnicity diversity and also... Uh, and also queer diverseness in it. And yeah, actually, the last book I ended up actually reading, the last book in the year was, well, oh, last. Ah, sorry, last, was Downstairs Girl by Stacey Lee. This is historical YA, also diverse historical YA. It's set in the 18, let me check out exactly. 18. Let me check out. Okay, it doesn't say. Sometimes, like, books say, like, 
from the first chapter it says like 1870, 18 blah blah. I think this is it's 1880. Sorry, I'm just going to check it because I'm pretty sure it says blah 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 blah. Sorry, yeah, 1890. I did know it was almost just 10 years off, but yeah, it's set in the 1890s. It's set in San Francisco. No, sorry, um, big stupid now. Set in Atlanta. It's set in La Atlanta. So the protagonist is a Chinese American. Uh, of course, because, because of that, she meets perjures and stuff. And also, well, she's also poor, sadly. So she also has like, class issues as well. Uh, but yeah, there's a great love story in it. And there's also lots of good... That, it's a good, great story with like, lots of plots. It's love stories. It's a plot of her discovering more about her family. Because she doesn't really know that much about her family. She's uh, an orphan. It's a story of like finding your place in the world. It's a story of fighting in the man in a way. And yeah, it's just a great, great read. Both important, fun, delightful, heartfelt, heartwarm, heartwarm and heartfelt it's the same. Anyway, yeah, just great, great read. Great, great way to end that reading year, really. Great year. <laughs> great way. So, yeah, like, uh, on New Year's Eve, like, there's some of the food, like, the dinner took, took a bit longer to make. I'm like, I don't mind. I got a great book. I was just sitting there reading. And then, like, then we were supposed to start reading it. Start reading. Start eating. I was like, okay. But then, like, no, we have to get this and this and this. Okay, I'm getting my book. So, I was standing, like, by the uh, dinner table, uh, like, reading the book, the chapter, like, just before we were about to eat, because it was just so, so amazing. And, uh, yeah, well, sorry, completely, yeah, but mostly, eh, blah, 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 yeah, and then also, um, sadly, I suppose, as happens sometimes, I had one DNF, one DNF, no, actually, I had two DNFs. Well, yeah, one of them is The Blossom and the Firefly by Sheryl Smith, so, Pitching myself in her in the hand with a book. That's bad. But yeah, uh, so this is a YA historical romance set in uh, Japan. Uh, yeah, I I didn't actually know that much about it. I think I saw it on a few lists here and there. I suppose maybe that should have given me hints. Like often, if you don't hear a lot about a book, it might be because because it's bad. I suppose it might just because it's underrated. But yeah. So I like the content of it. I like, like I like historical books. I like YA books. I like romance books. I like them all in one. But this, I read like two chapters, but I was just so bored. I didn't really connect to the characters at all. So I just like, I don't care. I don't care. So yeah, I I ended up DNFing it. So this is going to charity. So that's that. Uh, also, uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, I also finished a sinister, the sinister mystery of Miss Rising Girl. It's way up there uh, at the moment. I'm kind of too lazy to get it. But I did finish it. It's the last book in the uh, a lady gentlewoman, lady gentlewoman series by Theodore Goss. The trilogy. Definitely check it out. Uh, yeah, I very much enjoy that book. I would say I like that one more, but as I think in some aspects more than the for second book. But yeah, I'm just gonna yeah, and it there. Come to bring it to me a long video, a longish. Um, I all yeah, the other <coughs> the other DNF was Time Was by No No the. Nah. Time was by Nora Roberts. So this, I found this book in actually like I think it was Chaos. No, yeah, I think it was Chaos. Yeah, but like oh, Nora Roberts, I read some books by you. I kind of want to read you. I read the back. It seems to be a time travel story. It's like I love me some time travel. So bought it, went home, and decided to read it that day. I think more or less. Yeah. Yeah, that book was just, no, no. So, 
I, I think I like I ended up reading like six, maybe ten or seven chapters. They were short chapters, but anyhow. So like, okay, so the story is that man is from the future and he's uh, trapped in the past, which is the 1980s. And he is just kind of like, he is so horny. Like, he just completely all the time thinks about sex. All the time it's like, okay, I understand this woman is beautiful, but like, don't you want to flirt or talk and get no or no? He's just like, sex, 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 sex. And I'm like, what? I mean, I don't mind sex in books, but it can't be all that that guy is talking, thinking about. It, that's childish, at least in my mind. I, yeah, I um, kind of felt in a way a bit rapey in a way because he was just thinking about it so much. And um, yeah, I could not stand it. Couldn't stand it at all. So yeah, DNF'd that one big time. Uh, I haven't given it in charity yet, but it is definitely going to charity. Definitely. Hopefully someone else will love it. Or maybe they'll, I don't know, use it as a foot leaner, maybe? I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, and also, I also did finish The Rosie Assault by Raimi Simpson. And that's the last book in the Rosie Assault series. I did, yeah, this one I did talk about in my vlog, I did a procrastinating vlog, I'll, I'll link that in Doodler because I talked about some of the books I'm talking about here, and uh, yeah, that one was very delightful, I <laughs> actually already gave away the book because it's a big paper, like, no, I'm gonna give it away and just buy the mass market one, like, if the mass market is available, I'll get it, like, I don't really need huge books like why do they exist these huge paperbacks I don't understand like why yeah um yeah so yeah that one was very good sad to see that series end the rosy results a rosy product uh, series but still helpful there was talks about the first book being a movie hopefully that happens because that would be so so cool but yeah then we have Kingdom of Copper by, sorry, S. A. Chakaboti. So this is the second book in the Davabad trilogy. So I did this as a bud read with uh, Katie from Katie Reads and Rants. I'll, I'll link her down below. Don't worry I'll, worry, I'll do it, Kitty. I won't forget. Um, yeah, so this book. <sighs> I think I end up getting maybe three stars. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I kind of felt like, I really felt like not a lot happened in it. And then I felt like it had like, it had time jumps. Like, okay, I suppose in the beginning it had time of, time of like, okay, time jump, okay. It was stuff being explained. And then stuff wasn't really explained. I didn't really, I think I'm going to do a review on it. Just kind of just on it, but I suppose it might be bad because I, all in all, I don't really have that high ho high thoughts on the trilogy, so it might be ranty ish. Well, people should be fine with rants for you sometimes. I did used to call my channel that, uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna not gonna say anything more. And then if you ha want more of my thoughts on that trilogy comment and I might do a video. Yeah, I'll do it like that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So let's see, that's it. Actually, not it. I also read and finished Not Your Backup by CB Lee. At the moment, I'm not quite sure where it's at. <laughs> it's somewhere in my bookshelves. Again, a bit lazy. I should have figured, find, find, found it before I started filming. I didn't. But yeah, Not Your Backup, I also talked about it in the vlog. But yeah, it's it's the third in that Not Your series. And the last one, it's coming up this year. Oh yeah, that's actually another series I'm going to finish. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to link it just in the other video. Yeah, sorry. But yeah, uh, yeah, Not Your Backup, the protagonist is Latin American or Latinx American. She's asexual. She's kind of discovering asexuality through that book. And um, 
she's actually not she actually doesn't not have a superheroes but like she still more kind of wants to be well she does not have superpowers but she like still she, she still wants to very much be part of a team so that's kind of like her role in that book and uh yeah part of it was kind of dragging but for the most part the book was very good and yeah i'm very intrigued how it all how it's all gonna end very very intrigued and uh yeah so that's kind of is my oh but that, that's kind of is it's okay give me a little moment i have one little thing to do Wait a moment, just wait there. Can you? I think you can. Sorry, a little moment. So, um, I had, yeah, now I'm ready. So I had a plan originally because Diverse December I planned to read only or like the majority of diverse books. I didn't read only diverse books, but I read I would say quite a few of them were actually diverse. Uh, so the ones I have here ready is Skyward, as I said, African American protagonist. Uh, also uh, one of the one of the other characters is a wheelchair. One of the other characters is fat, so there's diversity all over here. It's not on voices, but it's diversity. And it's called Diversity December, not uh it's not on voices October, so I suppose and I mean it's my reading month. It's not like it's uh something I'm going to do for for school, so own own voices or diverse it's kinda of up to me and I do kind of want to mainly read own voices, but sometimes you have people who write about, some, about someone else, but they still do it very good. So, I mean, I suppose that's kind of a big debate. But yeah, I I read diverse books in any types, really. You know, both diverse and own voices. Like, yeah, both of them. But yeah, <laughs> and then we have... Uh, so Valentine's Girl, which is written, it is it is own voices, diverse own voices. As I said, Asian Ch <laughs> Chinese American theme or Asian American, she's both. It also has, sorry, quite a few African Americans in it, and there might be a lesbian. It's not confirmed. I have an idea, it might be, but yeah. And then we have the Sea Dragon Society, which is own voices because the author is trans, goes by Kay O'Neill. Mm, it says Katie, but that's something kind of old. It's kind of old, um, uh, old name. Now they want to go by Kay O'Neill. Uh, they have written this series, the Sea Dragon, Dragon, Dragon series, this one, and then this Sea Dragon. There's a second book in the series, anyway, and then the third book, I think it's coming out. There's a spin off called. Spin off called. Acorn Cove? Acorn Cove? Sorry. And uh, she, also, she also wrote uh, Princess Princess Ever After. Sorry. They also wrote Princess Princess Ever After. So they had quite a. Uh, Quite a little backlist, so that's good for me, really. But yeah, and then you have uh, Arusha, which is about Indian mythology, written by an Indian American, own voices, diverse, middle grade. And then you have <clears throat> this one, Ex Nakurum de Heltia, which, as I said, is non fiction, own voices, uh, based around how it is to be African Norwegian. So, yeah. Own voices. It's on fiction, but it's still on voices. I mean, own voices doesn't really have to be fiction. It can be perfectly non-fiction. Can it? I uh, think you can. Yep. Yeah. And then Death Set Sail. Uh, it is not all voices, but as I said, it has queer uh, rep rep uh, queer representation. And this one also has uh, Egypt represent Egyptians representation. And 
uh, as like the whole series has the one finest is Hong Kong from Hong Kong, so it has also Asian representation. So yeah, and then also from the book that don't, don't have at the moment, um, the Copper Coin Copper Kingdom. It's diverse. It's set in a Middle Eastern setting. Uh, it's not by own voices, but still. And also, okay, I have it, but it's down there, too lazy. But yeah, the Dark Archive. Now, I'm not quite sure if it is on voice or not. The author hasn't talked about her queerness, so I'm not sure she might be, they might be queer, not sure. But anyway, uh, the characters, some of them are queer. And not, not any of the main characters in this series, in this book. But there's like mentions of like the Quaker, like there's a queer character that kind of has um that has scenes here and there. So it's yeah, it's diverse-ish. And also one of the main characters is Asian. Uh, it's Asian American, I think it's Asian American. Yeah. So yeah, there's a diverseness there also. So yeah. If you have any thoughts, comments, please leave them down below. And uh. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye.